My name is Hunter Ingram and I am the Assistant Museum Director here at the Berguin Wright House and Gardens. We are Wilmington's oldest and largest historic site. And the house that you see today, sitting at 3rd and Market Streets, has been here since 1770. It was built by a local merchant at the time named John Berguin. And John was more than just a merchant. John is also going to be a government official here in Wilmington, having served as the private secretary of Royal Governor Arthur Dobbs and also the treasurer of the colony of North Carolina. This house was built to be more than just a house. In fact, when John Bergwin built it in 1770, he never lived here. He actually used it as a place to entertain his guests, whether they were residents of Wilmington or whether they were guests of the town. Now, not everybody would be welcomed at the house. It was for the wealthiest, the most powerful people in town. It was where John could invite his guests over and really entertain them, show off his own wealth and show off his own local power. John was a prolific man here in Wilmington, and so the house was built to impress the second people walk through the front door, which you can see when you take a tour here at the Bergwin Wright House today. It is built almost entirely of longleaf pine, which is the namesake of North Carolina. Our official nickname is the land of the longleaf pine, and John built this house of longleaf pine, which is an old growth longleaf pine. It takes decades longer to mature than the pines we see most frequently around today. This house today is an incredible artifact of its time, but it's been here for 253 years. So after John Bergwin sells the house in 1799, the Wright family, the namesakes of Wrightsville Beach, they are going to buy it and they will move a family in. So for several decades, all the way until the second half of the 1800s, there will be a family living in this house. In time, in the 1840s, there will need to be an addition put on the back and today, that addition is the headquarters of the National Society of the Colonial Dames of America in the state of North Carolina, who actually bought this house and this property in 1937 to save it from being demolished by Standard Oil, which did want to put a gas station on the site. Since then, the Dames have worked to not only restore the house, but maintain it as a house museum here in Wilmington. It has been operational since 1951 as a house museum, and therefore the oldest house museum in the southeastern United States. And so the Dames have worked very hard to keep it open, and very hard for us to be able to tell our guests today the history of it as a colonial structure, but all the Wilmington history that has unfolded around it in the past 253 years. When you visit the Bergwin Wright House today, we're going to take you on a tour of the colonial home, again built in 1770, but you are actually going to enter through the first thing built on this property, and that is the city's first jail. This particular site, before it was ever the colonial home owned by John Bergwin, it was the site of the city's first jail. Now, today, when you come to the site, you're going to see three colonial jail structures. The first is our visitor center where you're going to see us and buy tickets for the tour, that would have been your main jail building. And when you walk in, on the outside, you will see big stones that at the time were known as ballast stones. Ballast stones come from all over the world and were put in the bottoms of ships to keep them balanced and buoyant on the water. But when they arrived here to Wilmington, which was a very valuable port city in the colonial era, they are here to pick up cargo, tar, pitch, turpentine, longleaf pine, and they got rid of those stones to make room for that cargo. And those stones were used to build some of the earliest structures here in Wilmington, including the city's first jail. Our jail buildings today have ballast stone walls, including the one that we're standing in, which is the jailer's quarters, eventually used as the kitchen house for the colonial homes. Now, the colonial justice system at the time was not like ours today. It did not seek justice and safety for its town. It was about propping up the class system here in the colonies. And so this particular site would have had people brought here on charges. Inside our main jail building, which again is our visitor center today, you would have seen cells in cages that would have had people here on petty crimes. So stealing a loaf of bread or public drunkenness. But they also criminalized things like gossiping using foul language, laziness, and adultery. And so people could be brought here on charges that we wouldn't necessarily criminalize today, but they could have been various serious offenses at the time. Now underneath the main jail building would have been the dungeon where people are held for more grievous crimes. So murder, robbery, treason, and those folks down there likely faced the death penalty. 
which would have been carried out on the site. Today, you can walk through our acre of beautiful manicured gardens. Again, today, we have the main jail building. We have the debtor cells where you were held if you owed money. And we are standing in the jailer's quarters, which again has these ballast stones walls that date all the way back to 1744 when the jail was built here in Wilmington. Today, you can visit the Bergwin Wright House six days a week, Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and take a tour of not only the 1770 house that we're in right now, but also our three 1744 colonial jail structures. On our site today is four of the eight remaining colonial structures here in Wilmington, and you get to see all four on one of our tours. Each of the tours starts at the top of the hour, beginning at 10 a.m., and our last tour departs at 3 p.m. It's $15 for adults and then discounts for military uh, seniors and those under 18. But there's plenty of other things to do here on the site. When you get downstairs and you visit the site, if you don't have time for a tour, you can visit the visitor center where we have an exhibit hall with so much of the history that we talk about here on the site, including information about crime and punishment for when it was a jail, and also the role of women and enslaved workers in not only building this site, but maintaining it when it becomes a home. Also downstairs, we have an art gallery, which each month gets a new artist with their local show. All of these local artists get an opening gala on the fourth Friday gallery nights with um, the Arts Council here in Wilmington. So you can come and celebrate their new works each month on fourth Friday. And we are constantly doing events on the site. Be sure to check out the new season of the podcast. We do a podcast called Bergwin Wright Presents that allows you to learn about the history of Colonial Wilmington and Colonial North Carolina, and you don't even have to be here on the site. You can take it with you on your daily run or your drive across the state. Whatever you may be doing, you can listen to this area's history, and we do it through several different topics. One season has been Outlander in the Cape Fear, where we take you through the history of the Colonial North Carolina era through the book and TV series Outlander. So if you're fans of Jamie and Claire, you can learn about this area's history through their story. We also did a season about Cape Fear legends and lore, talking about the fascinating and sometimes creepy legends that have defined this area for almost 300 years. We always want you to come to the house. Take a tour here and be outside in our gardens. We have over an acre of gardens that you can visit free of charge with a self-guided garden tour. So whether you're here to take a tour or just for a leisurely stroll in the afternoon, the Bergman Wright House is not just Wilmington's oldest and largest historic site. It's a place where you can come and spend your afternoon, learn a little bit of history, and experience downtown Wilmington.